All of these children, all of the three children have, uh, I think, C, the group D eyes, uh, unilaterals, like CT to B, because the B, as we heard yesterday, is, is for vitreous seeds or subretinal seeds. So this eye is totally normal. This child presented with um, um, a very big tumor, retinal detachment, posteriorly, which you don't see in that picture. So total retinal detachment, lots of seeds. How would you treat this child? Why is it? Sorry? IAC. IAC? Who said IAC? Okay. That's uh, one idea, yes. Do you have any evidence why? Imaging that there is an involvement of the optical no. or no, no. <coughs> don't know that MRI really shows what even vascular the, oil what was the age of the child. Age of the child? Uh, uh, she's about two and a half. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry? It's Depends on what? It's because maybe the patient of the parents are poor, maybe I will recommend the manipulation. If the poor you recommend manipulation. Forward expensive treatment, you'll recommend IAC. Yeah. Okay. Does he have, does he all have uh, anterior segments in the end? No, there's nothing in the anterior segment. The anterior segment's normal. Okay, but the reference is first the anterior. If it is able to go to the uh, optic uh, artery, I will give it the IAC. Yes. Right? Yes. And the uh, is the inclination. Yes. The first is the Chemo. Chemo. Okay. I, I, I'd like to not break down, but later on to, today, um, I offer you a, a table which will have um, different things you might need to talk about for it, getting informed consent from the parents and um, what are the, and the, on the table and ask you to fill in what you think all, all, all the gaps are because I don't think. We have a good template for informed consent for a situation like this. And maybe we can limit that project to group D unilateral eyes. And what should the parent, how to have the parent have a free choice instead of us deciding and telling the parent. But that's for a little bit later. So um, because we're in Toronto and we, we think there's risk in this eye for extension, this eye is perfectly normal. Um, we did not do intra chemotherapy, and the parents were very happy to have the eye removed and know that that was the best chance that the cancer was gone. That was the expectation. Um, yesterday, so this is just another view of it with retinal detachment, um, ultrasound, and, and no involvement of the anterior chamber on UBM. So we have the luxury of more time per child at diagnosis than you have in China or India. And um, so we do all sorts of imaging. And we did 360 degrees and there's nothing anterior. But we took out the eye. And this is the sclera. This is two millimeter measurement. Whoops, don't even touch it. It knows you're there if you go close to it. Um, so uh, there's way more than three millimeters of choroidal invasion. This is only in a calot. It's not in the main central sections. So if you only looked at the main sections of the side, you would not know that was there. We consider that's high risk, and the child's now going on chemotherapy. It's just another view of it, so you can see it. It's totally really invading choroid, and it even has some structural things, but it's not in ciliary muscle. The ciliary muscle is clear or anterior. <coughs> so this is the child six weeks post-op. At the time of the nucleation, as you'll hear more about from Pam, um, we already put in a temporary um, prosthetic eye. This is her first fitted eye in um, the 
right side. And, uh, <coughs> but the pathology shows it's P3A, uh, so she's getting adjuvant chemotherapy. Because we had the tumor from the eye, we were able to find the two different RB1 mutations in the tumor. And we look at her blood, and it doesn't have either of those mutations, but we can We can only go down to it. She could be mosaic for it. She's the first affected member of the family for either mutation but at a level that we can't detect. But when we know the mutation, we can look for it with very, very high sensitivity. So we will label her H0 on the new classification. So she's uh, probably had one cycle of chemotherapy now, and she'll have four of the three drugs, no, no phlegophosphate. I don't think there's evidence to add that to it, even from Paris. <coughs> this is the next child, also CT2B, with seeds. Interesting anatomy of the tumor, because it has this bubble coming out and seeds out of that. And is this a big seed, or is it part of the main tumor? I don't know. But here's the an uh, ultrasound of it see coming out, and then you see this is actually a cross-section of this on the UVM, UVM, normal other eye, and um, the optic nerves aren't in that image, but there's no, no indication of optic nerve involvement. So we also indicated that eye, and um, because parents want the eye out to get rid of the cancer and not go through a lot of expensive invasive treatment. And this one was a very interesting controversy because a neuropathologist <coughs> does our eye pathology, retinoblastoma pathology, she actually is not very much trained in eye anatomy. So she read this as massive choroidal invasion. So I said, that's not massive choroidal invasion because here's Brooke's membrane running right along there. You can't see it very well on this screen, but this is under the pigment epithelium, but the, the Brooks membrane has done an amazing job keeping it out of the choroid, except for this little patch there. Is that what you would see? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I couldn't persuade everyone because the official pathologist said it's massive choroidal invasion, and who am I? I'm just an ophthalmologist. So we sent it out to, we didn't send it to Utero, but we sent it out to many popular pathologists, they all agree with me, so now I'm in political trouble. <laughs> That's not <nice. coughs> So um, this child, we would consider as an opus where you can see Brooks Van Brook here, but you, it's here, it's just an artificial separation there, and a little bit of less, 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 less. Mm. So that's a PT2A, and the child has, gets no more treatment at all. Uh, that tumor, by the way, also is interesting. I'll give you more detail here to show. This is the words that go in the report from Impact Genetics. Um, this is a, in the tumor, there's a homozygous mutation, so there's two identical copies, both mutate both genes. Our genes have exactly the same mutation in them, and yet there are two copies of the RB gene, so there's been loss and reduplication. It's not hemizygous. There's two copies there. This is getting into the details, but the report provides all of this, including a reference that this particular mutation that can be found on Deep Merkelman's database. So the and blood is normal, so this child is also H0. So both, but one child needs chemotherapy, four cycles, and then we'll be followed, and one child needs no more treatment, ready to resume the child's life, because we took out the more. So this is more interesting and difficult, because this is a, also CT2B, they're seeing, but you see this red behind here, that's patched retina. So that makes it very tempting to go with IEC or systemic chemotherapy. And we did um, OCT, optical coherence tomography, across the tumor and the retina. And you can see here's, the, this is the shadow from the tumor. You can't see anything more here, but it looks like it splits the fovea. Francis, what would you do with this child? Uh, provided that uh, all, all the MRI, MRI imaging says there's okay, no. I would go for an IAC for this kind of channel. Tero? Chemotherapy, yes. Chemotherapy. The CAS? What's 
possibly systemic evil. John? Yeah, I agree with the recap. So we had a big debate on this one too. And um, the parents swayed it, and we took out the eye, which is why it's a pathology session. Um, but I thought there was enough risk. There was seeding, everything is require a lot of therapy. And even if we could see this, I wasn't sure what was underneath the rest of that tumor. If it had been bilateral, I would have had no question that we would have treated it. In the OGT, you have to take into account the alternative possibility that there might be a small secondary focus mimicking after the back to the Sorry, there might be what? If you have a multi-cooperative blastoma, that might be a small retinal focus that thickens the retina and mimics half of the macula. But this isn't focus. Yeah. Yes. This is, this, no, I, I, I don't think so. But it, it, you can't see it very well in this resolution. But that was absolutely normal retina and normal phobia, yes. The small retinal blastomas would not be in the, inner, in the nerve fiber layer. They would be in the inner nuclear layer. And this child's mm -hmm. two and a half. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have a small foveal tumor. If it had a foveal tumor, it would be big by now. But you're alluding to an empirical
Did you try endothelial treatment before? Yes. Just to yes. Test, yes. 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 Uh, to see if she didn't recover. No, she's not she's not recovering at all. Sometimes she tests, you know. Oh yes, yes, yes. But an anatomically normal looking, this, if you treated this with a calcified, this would look normal, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't reach the brain with optical signals. So that's my three cases illustrated taking out the eye. Um, of course, if you do the IEC. You don't usually take out those eyes um, um, until there's something other reason to do so. But we'll hear more about that later.